Hey everyone, Kevin Marks here from Fast Tracks, and tonight we have another episode of Upstairs in the Workshop. It's volume four, and tonight we're going to take a look at building a quad 45 degree crossing. Here in the workshop, which is a little getaway from being in the office all day and staring at computer screens, we uh, like to build cool stuff. I love crossings, I love the geometry, and if you have seen me at uh, the National Train Show, or at Train Fest, or uh, the March Meet in Chicago. One of the things I have along with me is a quad 45 degree crossing that I built a, four, uh, a few years ago. So tonight we're gonna take a look at a 45 degree crossing, which I haven't done before, it's new, and it's a little out of the box, and it's not going to be a how-to video tonight. I've built uh, almost half of it, and I was talking to Tim today, walking through what I was doing, and we thought it'd be good to show you live, you know, just some of the things that I've done and how it can apply to building crossings and show you something that, you know, is a variation on a fixture that we offer. So I'm a no-skill trolley modeler, and that alone is a challenge because you end up making most of your things anyway. And the standard that I use on the modules is the East Penn standard out in Philly, which is three and a quarter inches between track centers. And the NMRA standard for O scale is four inches. So when you start compacting everything tighter together, it kind of throws out some challenges that need to be overcome. And when you're running parallel track or curves, that's all very easy and you can do that. But when you start looking at crossings, and squeezing them tighter together, they start to overlap a little bit. And you just can't build a fixture in, here's the 45 degree fixture that I used that you know, you'll know you see tonight, um, what I built with it. So you just can't take one of these, build four, cut them to size, put some rail joiners on, and you're good to go because they kind of overlap. So the first thing that I always suggest doing when you're doing a plan is download our printable track templates. And that's exactly what I did. So this just shows you the enormity of O scale. So here's four 45 degree crossings and two of the tracks are three and a quarter inches. Those are the trolley tracks. And then those are crossing a freight line, the Chicago Northwestern. So I'm replicating the scene in southern Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where the North Shore Line crossed the Chicago Northwestern. So the North Shore Line has three and a half inch spacing, or three and a quarter inch, and then the Chicago Northwestern is four inch spacing. So it's not a symmetrical crossing, and that again posed some other challenges. So once I, once I did the plan, uh, kind of came up with a plan of attack, and you know thought i would proceed and you know in all honesty i didn't this is my first time doing a quad 45 so you don't know what challenges you're going to run into until you get into it so i built the crossing you know just as normal and then i realized i built too much of it so when i was trying to overlap everything it wasn't working so i had to pull apart half of it and kind of redo it and i pulled it apart again thinking that was uh still too much and then I added a couple more things back onto it and then end up pulling those off again. So it's been a learning experience, but I figured I would start with the first one and figure out all the bugs and kinks before I build the other three. So now that I got that figured out, things should go a whole lot easier. So just to give you a little idea of what we're talking about tonight is this is what I've, this is what I've built so far. So I'll try to do this, I got some pretty strong lighting up here. So what we're gonna do tonight is we're going to kind of fill in all the other rails right around in here. There's two rails here, and then there's another rail that goes over here. And I would just wanna show you a couple things on you know how I built the crossing and a couple little tips. So if you're building a crossing, you can, you can kind of do the same thing. So the first tip I, I like to do is always file the longer angle first. And I found that works really, really well. And it doesn't matter what, what angle crossing you're doing is file the longer angle first. And then it's a lot easier to file the secondary angle, which is a much shorter precise angle and do that second because when you put it back in the the point form right here it's a whole lot easier let me get the camera angle just right it's a whole lot easier to 
just shave off a tiny little bit than it is to go through and file the, the longer angle. So the other thing that you wanna do whenever you use our, our point form tool here is there's a little bit of play in here. You can probably hear that. So what you wanna do is kind of hold it before you tighten it down is just kind of hold it over, push it on one end and then tighten it down and then do your filing from there. And that way your angle is always going to be consistent. And then even with this 45 degree angle, when I needed to take shavings off, I could just finger tighten it and then hold it with my finger. So that way there's pressure against here and then do the filing and, you know, make some adjustments very quickly without having to get out the wrench and keep, keep doing it. I do that when I make the initial cut and then all the other cuts, I just kind of put in finger tighten and um, go from there. So that's, that's tip number one. So the other thing I like to do when I build crossings is I like to start from the inside and work my way out. I just find it's easier. That way I have a game plan because every angle plays off of other angles. So when you sit down and look at it and go, where do I start? I just find that's the easiest thing is just start in the middle and kind of grow as you go out. The other thing that you want to do when you have rail in here, and I like to build... I like to build uh, without the ties. That way I know that the rail is sitting flat and I can move it and you can probably hear that. So I know there's no binding that's going on there. So then while you're building everything, sometimes you need to find that you need to slide a longer piece of rail further along. And it's a lot easier when you can take out that piece of rail that may be in the way rather than you know soldering as you go. And then once I'm satisfied with everything, then I take everything out of the fixture. I sand the ties with 400 grit to etch them a little bit. And then I sand the bottom of the rail. And then before I even start with the rail, I use a Dremel steel wire brush and I clean off all the, the mold release, um, not mold release, but there's a lubricant that's put on there while it's being pushed through the die. So, um, I try to get all that off before I even start. The rail's nice and shiny. I can see it really easily. And then when you do go to clean it up before soldering, there really isn't anything that you have to clean up. And then I'll also hit the bottom of the rail with some sandpaper as well too to etch it. And I've got some gloves here that I'll put on right before we start soldering. So I'm gonna solder this live and I'm not doing it in the fixture. So what I, what I approached this crossing with is let me hold it up here again is i built parts of it in the fixture so you can see right here that i've left this off completely i did put this one rail in last night but basically there were two separate crossings that i had to join together somehow and this is my parallel track right here so th these two rails needed to be perfectly parallel this piece is just a dummy crossing. I'm never gonna run any trains on it. It's going on an 18 inch module and that's not as critical, but these pieces had to be absolutely critical. So in order to do that, we make a couple tools that uh, I used. So we'll just kind of hold this up here a little bit. We make sweep sticks. So if you've been on the website, you've probably seen these. And then we make this tool called a space gauge which has little nubbies in the bottom that fit right inside these center pieces. So then what you can do is once you know your spacing, you can either put tape here or if you know your spacing, but you don't have, like I kind of cheated a little bit. I already have parallel track in this track center so I can put them on and then get the dimension. But if you haven't gotten to that point, what you can do is just take a ruler and you can actually measure on here what dimension you want and I can get three and a quarter inches. And then what you can do is these little bad boys just kind of pop up a little bit, just like this. You can put some wood glue right in here, squish it back down again, and then get out your ruler and measure it again to make sure that it's dead on accurate and then just take a Sharpie and write what, 
what track center it is on the outside right here. And that way you have something that you can reference time and time again. So what I did um, is I used these track or these space gauges with everything to kind of line everything up and you know hold it in place while I made some adjustments with the track. So I'm just going to pop these in here for a second and then I'll hold them back up to the camera again so you can kind of see you can kind of see what I did here. And uh, I love these little tools and they make life a whole lot easier. So let's see if I can do this without nope that didn't work. So here we go. So down on the workbench you can kind of see how these fit right inside here like this. The space gauges go right inside like that. And then once you pop everything together, everything fits nice and easy. Let me move this up just a little bit, just like that. So you can see how it holds everything in place. And those are, those are really invaluable tools. They're so simple. You know, they're just laser cut plywood that we make. You can order them and these are like three, four, nine dollars. So they're cheap enough that you can glue them up in different dimensions and then have some that are adjustable. Um, and then when I don't want to glue it, if it's like a one time only thing, I'll use painter's tape and wrap it around here to hold it in place while I do the work. So, so using the sweep sticks to line everything up is a huge, huge time saver. And that came in uh, very handy while I was working on it. The other thing that you need uh, are these metal rulers. You can get these at any hardware store. Uh, try to get thin ones. This is a little thicker one that I use for marking with the scribe. And then I have a thinner one. So for you guys in N or HO, try to get a nice thin one like this that you can fit inside um, your guardrails so you can make sure everything is lining up. They're all very handy. I find you can never have enough of them. So what we're going to do tonight is I'm just going to basically finish soldering some of the pieces on here to complete most of the crossing. I'm going to use my American Beauty single uh, electrode resistant soldering iron. Um, I will say if you're soldering an N or HO scale, a 35 or 40 watt iron is perfectly fine. You want to get a pencil tip, the narrowest tip you can find, so you can get that soldering iron where you need it to go. But an O scale, with I'm doing code 125, you need a lot more horsepower. So I've got a 100 watt American Beauty single point electrode, and it's almost like doing little mini spot welding. There's a foot pedal underneath the desk here, so I can just hit that and you know turn the juice on and create the joint so i did do all the prep work ahead of time everything is sanded everything is clean um, so what we need to do is put some gloves on i got to keep the oils off of just like painting you got to keep the oils from your fingers off of uh, the work that you're doing so you want to try to um, not touch anything with your bare hands once you get things cleaned up. I like using nitrile gloves that I bought these at Home Depot. They have little serrations on the end and they tend to hold up a little bit better than uh, latex gloves and can take a little more abuse. And if I do do anything with um, an oil-based paint, I can rinse the brushes out with lacquer thinner and protect my hands as well. So. Um, the other little thing that I love on my workbench, uh, if you've never seen these before, they're called one, two, three blocks. They're machinist one, two, three blocks. You can buy these on Amazon. You can go to Manhattan um, Supply Company. They're about $44 for a pair. They're one, two, three blocks because they're one inch this way, two inches this way, and three inches this way. This little guy weighs a couple pounds. And when you start stacking these on and you need some weight, you can get a lot of weight in a short space. And they're great for building track work because things can't move. When things move, that's when you have problems. That's when you get cold, cold solder joints. We don't want that. And tonight I need to hold some, some rail in place 
to double check the alignment before I solder it up. So I'm just going to, you know, have you on camera with me and I'm just going to kind of walk you through everything with what I'm doing. And uh, we're going to swap glasses whenever you're soldering or cutting metal. You always want to wear safety glasses. So I've got mine. They're prescription safety glasses and they work out great. They aren't progressive. So that way I can stare directly at the work and I can see what I'm doing. My, since I was going to redo my workbench, I kind of took everything off and my magnifying lamp is sitting off to the side. So I don't have that tonight. So when I do solder, if you don't have these Optivisor, um, um, uh, head covering, you can get these from Micromark and you can get these lenses in different um, strengths. So depending on what you need, the ones I have in here now are for doing close-up work. And that's critical when you're putting points together. It's amazing uh, the difference in having something magnified versus not magnified and um, how much of a difference that makes uh, on how sharp your points are. So I've got all that and what we're going to do, I'll move the camera down here just so you can kind of see exactly what, what I'm doing here. So this is what, this is what I'm looking at on the workbench and um, we're going to start again with the inside and then work our way back out again. So we did this piece of rail last night so I could hook these two together and then tonight we're going to do the inner side first and then we'll do the outer pieces um, after that. So kind of easy, which is good for the end of the day. So I'm just going to make sure that the piece that I need, because I cut a few different pieces here, is the piece that we are going to solder in. So now you can see this this rail in place right here and that looks pretty good so what we're going to do next is put some flux down so what I like to do with flux and I'm using the acid based flux that we saw on the website and then these little micro applicators that you can get they work great because you need flux but you don't need you don't need a ton of it so we're just going to quick go through and get some flux on on the PC tie actually on all the PC ties then after that we're going to put the rail back on and then check the alignment put a little flux on the side of the base of the rail and then we'll hit it with some solder and that will go extremely extremely quick so I'm making sure I have solder pretty much everywhere and the solder or the I'm sorry I have flux everywhere that I need it to be and then I'll make sure that I'm getting all the surfaces on the rail that we'll be touching so now what we're going to do is just pop this in place, put the optivizer down, take a look at it. It's looking pretty good. I have flux in all the right places. So now what I'm going to do is take the other one, two, three block and I'm going to I just bumped it there, and that's why I use one, two, three blocks so your work doesn't get bumped. So I'm just going to place that on the edge of the rail, and now I'm taking my straight edge, and I can then check to make sure that my rail is exactly where it needs to be based on all the other rail around. So now that that is in alignment, what I like to do first is just put a little bit of solder and tack on the end of the joints first. That way I know that nothing is going to move on me 
as I continue to work down the rest of the crossing. So now that that's done, actually I need to move the one, two, three block again. No matter how hard you try sometimes, things tend to move on you and we don't want that. So now I'm going to use my other one, two, three block add some additional weight. We're going to check it again. Make a couple little minor adjustments and that's looking good. So now we're going to hook up the resistance iron. So for people who haven't seen resistance soldering, basically we're creating an electrical loop between the iron and this little alligator clip that feeds into uh, the transformer that we have. And I'm going to hook the alligator clip to one side. Dial up the power to, I like going at 85 watts. I have power, that's looking good. We're going to check it again because I bumped the table when I did that. So that's looking really, really nice. So we want to clean the tip off, but we aren't using the tip to solder. We're just using the tip to apply power so you don't have to keep it as clean as a regular soldering iron and then the solder just as an, a comparison this is the solder we sell on the fast track site you can see how thin it is versus the stuff you see in the big box stores so I use this for torch soldering brass sides but for soldering track I like to use the thin stuff and that way I don't apply too much all at once. So now I'm just going to just tack together. I'm just gonna put a little bit of flux on top of the joint on each side. You can never check it too many times. And that's looking really good. So now we're just going to tack it on top that's it okay we're going to check it once more that's looking good and now we can tack this side down and all I'm doing is applying heat and solder to the top of the joint just to hold them together. That looks good. I'm pleased with that. So then what we can do is come back and I'm just going to move the one, two, three blocks to the other side. And since we have flux underneath each joint, I'm putting a little bit of flux on the base of the rail and the tie, and then I can apply heat to one side of the joint, and the solder will flow to the other side. And you'll just see just how quick and easy it is to do this side. So now, we'll get it fired up it's up to temperature and when I solder I like to swipe the solder from one side to the other and that way I'm controlling the amount of solder that goes on what I'm doing if you put the solder straight on a good clean joint will suck up as much solder as you want to give it 
but this way I can actually watch it flow underneath the tie because I etched the tie and the rail there's a tiny little gap underneath that allows the solder to flow so there's no solder globs and once I hit this with a wire brush when we're done just to clean up all the flux you won't even be able to tell that these ties were even or the rail was even soldered so this is looking really good and I'm just going right down the line and that's it so just to give you just to give you a little heads up of what we just did so right here we soldered this piece of rail right here and let me try to get in look at that there are no solder globs it's clean it's shiny I'll clean that up with a wire brush and it'll be perfect you won't even be able to tell and that's how quickly we did we did that piece of rail so now what I'm gonna do is we saw this tool in the tool section it's just a little scraper I'm just gonna go and because we have a rail we have one side where there's a, another rail that's going on I'm just going to give that a quick cleanup because once that other rail goes on, I won't be able to clean inside. That's looking great. So while I'm at it, I'm just going to quick scrape this other side. And all the joints are smooth and they're shiny. The joint didn't move when we soldered. That's why we have the weights and if you see a joint that is cloudy and not smooth that's called a cold solder joint because the joint was cooling while it was moving and it didn't bond properly so if you get one of those you can add more flux reheat the joint and make sure that nothing is moving so i'm really pleased with that if you do find you made a mistake I love this called Super Wick Soldering Braid. I got that on Amazon and I just order a couple rolls of that and I can clean up anything that I need to clean up. So now what we're going to do is basically solder the rail that the, the treads actually ride on and that's just on the outside of the joint that we were just working on so again that fits extremely well so what I'm gonna do so what I'm gonna do now I apologize this isn't as close as what you'd want to see but for Facebook live and I'm using the camera that's on my phone side so the resolution isn't as good and I'm doing that just so that way I can see what's in the frame as well if there was someone else here then they could watch the camera from the other side but for tonight this really isn't a high how-to video it's just hey I'm doing some cool stuff come on in watch what I'm doing and hopefully this gives some inspiration to build your own track work so when you get into a situation where you need something you have the confidence and the skill to just go build it not everything has to be pre-bought not everything has to be done in a fixture if you need something that is unique so I just applied flux everywhere and now I'm going to put the rail in and that fits in really really nice and again I already sanded everything with 400 grit sandpaper 
it's already sanded, so you don't have to worry about that. And I'm just going to uh, flip this around a little bit. And I've gotten good at soldering with both, both of my hands and that just comes with practice. So now we're gonna put some one, two, three blocks back down again. And before we get going, we're going to just check real quick with the ruler. Oh my God, that is just absolutely dead on. So now that we know that that is looking really good, I'm gonna put a one, two, three block on top of it just to hold it in place. Let's check it again. It moved just a tiny little bit. The one, two, three block will hold it in place and we're gonna do the same thing. We're going to um, just basically tack down the two ends to hold it in place. And then we're gonna go back and finish soldering up all the ties and that that uh, takes a lot of frustration out. So here we go. We got the iron, got the foot pedal. I got a little fan off to the side in case you hear that to blow the so uh, soldering fumes away. And uh, yes, there is a fire extinguisher nearby just in case something were to happen. It's not worth losing your house over a piece of track work. So now we're just going to tack in that joint. Nice and shiny. That works. And now we're going to do the other side here. Perfect. That is just outstanding. So now we can come back and I'm going to apply some flux to the outer base of the rail along the tie. That will help the sot or the flux that we already put on flow underneath. Come out the other side and we'll get a super strong joint. So now I'm going to put the iron on the inside in between the two rails. And that's one of the advantages of this single electrode soldering iron is I can get the electrode in some pretty tight spaces. So when you're doing guardrails like what we're doing now it makes life a million times easier. So the other thing I'm doing is this is how I'm holding the solder. So then I can swipe it across the joint and control the rate of the flow of the solder. And that's something you can do beforehand with whatever size rail you're using and practice a little bit. The joints are coming out nice and shiny. The solder is just being sucked up underneath the joint, which is exactly what we want. Could not be more pleased with how this is turning out. And that's it. We did another side. So we now have three sides to do, or we did two sides. We had three sides to do, and now we're gonna do this last one, and I'm gonna flip this around again. So do what's comfortable. The thing that you never wanna do is have to reach over into what you're soldering or reach over like this and reach over and try to get in. You want soldering to be nice and comfortable. So we're just going to do a quick little clean with the brush. That's looking good. And we're going to 
take this piece. So just so you can see what we did so far is down here, this was the piece I did last night and we put these two pieces in uh, just now. So now we're gonna put the other piece of rail and complete this side right here. So if you've just tuned in, we're working on uh, double crossing here. So this is half of what's going to be a quad 45 degree crossing. And that's pretty exciting. So we're just going to put this piece of rail in. I've already tested everything, cleaned everything. That's looking really good. It's always good to double check right before you do it. You never know. You might have picked up a piece of rail from someplace else and you don't want to solder that on. Uh, that may have occurred yesterday and the 25 minutes it took to fix it could have been spent on building the rest of the turnout. So the nice thing about working in metal and the more you get used to working in metal, the more you appreciate it because whatever you do, you can take apart. If it doesn't turn out exactly how you want it, you can take it apart, clean it up, redo it, and you'll never know that you may have tried it before. And uh, I've started doing that with brass cars and also working on photo watching some, uh, some O scale kits and I was terrified to start and I was fortunate to find someone who knew what he was doing and I watched him I watched his technique which is really not much different than what we're doing now you just want to clean everything and while you're cleaning it keep the oils from your fingers off of it and then you want to make sure that it is secure. You don't want any movement whatsoever. So we just put down that fourth piece right here and we're going to take our straight edge and we're going to do the same thing that we did on all the other ones. And these straight edges are just invaluable and they work. Oh, that's looking really good. So now I'm going to put the one, two, three block now that I know that it's secure, I'm going to put the one, two, three block on top of it to hold it in place. Now I'm going to dab a little bit of flux on top of each of the points on each end. And just like the other ones, we're going to tack those down first. So that way it's not going to move on us while we do everything else. And I need to hook up my, my alligator clip to the end here and we've got power and let's do this it's nice and shiny a little bit of smoke that's okay who doesn't love a little bit of solder and flux smell it means you're creating stuff now we're going to come back do this other side and with 85 watts it gets this nickel silver up to temperature literally in a second or two and we're good to go. So now that that is tacked in place I can come back and I'm going to add the flux to the base of the rail on the outside and that will secure it all in place and this will just take a moment and then we can clean off the tops of the rails and I can show you what we did so thanks for sticking with sticking with me and we got a lot of neat stuff coming up in the works so we're just swiping the solder on nice and carefully and it just flows underneath the base of the rail. There's no solder globs. <coughs> Hang on, need some Gatorade.
There we go. I think I inhaled some fumes right there. So now we're just going to go right down the line. And add just a tiny little bit. So we're swiping the solder so we can control the rate of the flow. And that yields some extremely clean solder joints, which I will show you in just a minute. So if you're getting big globs on your track, you either haven't cleaned it, either your ties or your rail, or you don't have enough heat, or a combination of both. So there we go. This is what we did tonight. So now what we're going to do is you can see we're missing uh, a tie right here in the middle. And that's not on the fixture. So that way in the most critical part of the joint, uh, the most critical part of the joint, the fixture is actually holding it in place. So you can make sure that uh, everything will line up. So now that, so now that, all the joints are in place we're going to add a PC tie back in that spot and that will help kind of hold everything together so what I'm gonna do is take my scribe and I'm gonna mark where the rail is so that way when we put some flux on it I know exactly where the flux needs to go. And with the resistant iron, resistance iron, it's like little spot welding and it will make very quick work of adding that tie back to the middle. So we're almost done. If you've been here from the beginning, thank you very much. If you have come in halfway, I'm Kevin from Fast Tracks and I do this video series called Upstairs in the Workshop. You may have seen it on the NMRAX clinics that Gordy Robinson and Martin Jenkins have put on. I've done some track building clinics there, and I've done some soldering clinics. So if you want to learn some good solder techniques that you're seeing tonight, I explained everything in those videos. So you can go to the NMRA.org Facebook page, or if they've been published already, you can go to the Fast Tracks page and pull them up. Hang on, more Gatorade. <coughs> okay, so now that we have flux on everything, I'm just going to flux the inside because I'm going to kind of flow everything in here. And then we're going to do the other one real quick. And that'll look pretty fantastic. Then we'll clean the tops of the rails, give it a quick brush with the wire brush, and then we'll be good to go for tonight. So now we're just going to solder in that center tie. And all I always keep forgetting to hook up the electrode. You gotta be careful with these electrodes. They can actually get pretty warm. So the thing that you don't want to do is rest your hand on them. So I'm just touching the base of the rail on the inside just to hit it a little bit. That way I can also hide the solder on the inside of the joint. And and sometimes that solder just doesn't want to go. So let's try. There we go. Perfect. It's just that easy. And everyone I know who 
waited to get a resistance iron the first thing they always say is why did I wait so long let's try this one a little bit more because I have a lot of joints going on here I gotta heat up a lot of space there we go outstanding that's looking really really good one more for this side that one ended up a little bit on the rail but I can clean that up so that's one side and then we're going to do the other side so this is what we just did so we just added this center tie right here back on where you can see on this crossing it's missing right here so we're going to add that one on and then clean her up and we'll be done so thanks again for sticking around tonight and I'd just be doing this anyway it's nice to have a little bit of company with me and I'm just going to mark where the rail goes so that way I know where to put my flux and I'm just using a scribe to do that so now that I know where my rail is going to sit I'll go a little bit outside that line because you want the solder to flow underneath the entire joint and that works really really great and once everything else is lined up this tie is just really for strength so I'm just kind of eyeballing where it needs to go like that and then we're going to put the one two three blocks back on and again things moving while you're soldering is very bad that's how you get cold solder joints so now we're just going to heat up hook up that electrode again that pesky electrode don't touch it it gets hot remember we're pushing 85 watts here out of this iron so just because it's a resistance iron doesn't mean that it doesn't get hot if you aren't careful there we go and you can always tell when things start to change there's one and now we'll do the other side right here perfect you can imagine how more difficult it would be with a regular iron trying to get inside all of these crossings so if you want an American Beauty resistance iron, Micromark sells them. So when they have their specials with 20% off and free shipping, that's a good time to buy them. And then this single electrode, which is the steel and copper electrode that's in the tip, those didn't come with the iron. I bought those directly off of the American Beauty website. Okay, here we are, last joint. You always have to be careful on the last joint because you're excited to finish. Voila! Turn the iron off. And we are done soldering. So if you just tuned in, this is what we've been working on. Look at that so we just added the center tie to everything so now what we're gonna do is clean up is clean up the uh, the top of the ties so I'm just gonna use a flat file and just do a very very light cleanup I don't want to mark up the rails you have to be careful with with a file on top of your rails it's easy to get some gouges in there so we're just gonna
kind of take the high spots off and we're going to clean that up just a little tiny bit and then we're going to do the rest in sandpaper so I like using 400 grit which you can get it'll say P400 on the back I think that might be backwards in your camera I apologize and then I just use the side of the brush here there's a curved side but then this side is completely flat and that's a great side to wrap the sandpaper around and just give it a quick little touch up that's looking fantastic and then from there we're going to take the same brush just give it there's flux on here on the ties so I'm brushing it off with this wire brush and then I'll take this over to the sink wash it in Dawn dish soap because we're using acid based flux things can eventually corrode and we don't want it to corrode so now that we got that done now you always save this until the last step you take your truck and you run it through and you can just hear how nice and smooth I still need to do a little bit of touch up with sanding which I'll do afterwards but hopefully I'll get in here you can hear it's just nice and smooth and beautiful and that's exactly what we want so we did a lot of soldering outside of the fixture so there it is that was tonight's project so we got that done so this is half of what a quad 45 degree crossing will look at and this is O scale and that's code 125 kind of hold it this way so you can see just how nice all those dimensions are and when you get all those diamonds looking like that the symmetry is just beautiful so there you go so thanks for sticking with me we can change glasses back and got a few more things going on that everyone should probably know about so um, we're going to continue with the upstairs in the workshop which is just you know cool tips and techniques up here and uh, that I pass along to everybody if you listen to a modeler's life podcast you can hear me on that on the fans of a modeler's life and viewer mail um, my nickname on the podcast is hard part because of my hair right there so when they talk about hard part that's me so you can listen to me on a modeler's life podcast and on the modeler's life Facebook page we're gonna start a new video series as well called to cool tools with Kevin so I've got a lot of cool stuff both upstairs in the track building workshop and then downstairs uh, in the wood shop and the metal shop so uh, there's some nice German woodworking tools downstairs that we'll kind of cover. Uh, I picked up a Sherline lathe and a Sherline eight-way adjustable mill, which I'm still learning how to use, so that's pretty sweet. And we'll just cover things that you need to have in your track building workshop. So I'm going to replace these Menards lights with some very adjustable um, LED bulbs, so those will be coming soon. So we'll have a little bit of better lighting up here. And the uh, last thing I'll leave you with is just keep watching the Fast Tracks Facebook page because there will be some exciting new products coming out in just a few short weeks. And all I can say is holy cow and wow, unbelievable. So uh, uh, Mr. Warris has outdone himself again. And uh, you'll really like what you're going to see with what's coming out very, very soon. So thanks again for everybody. And... Uh, We'll see you next time on Upstairs in the Workshop or catch me on a Modeler's Life podcast. Oh, one last thing. Thanks, Sean. If you uh, want to see more cool track building tips, I'm also one of the uh, moderators on Track Modeling and Detailing Facebook page. So there's another Facebook page called Track Modeling and Detailing. 
and there's all kinds of people just like me who love building and detailing track and you can learn a lot about detailing track there's prototype pictures there's how-to stuff when people have new ideas they share on the page everyone is very supportive if you have a question feel free to ask and there are a lot of great experts on that page who can jump in and help and give you some advice on building track so Thanks again, everybody. Have a great Monday, and we'll see you real soon.